What's up smart homers? My name's Aaron and in this video I want to show you the Elecro Grow Cube. This is an all-in-one plant care system that monitors the moisture level of your plant soil and then provides water based on that data or at set intervals. Let's go ahead and pop the box open and get it all set up. And while we're doing that, just want to let you know that Elecro did send this to me, but they didn't tell me anything I should say about it. It's going to be an honest review. Out of the box, you get the Grow Cube, a power adapter, and an instruction manual. On the back of the cube, you can see four water ports and four moisture sensor ports, and then the power port and the micro USB port. Above them, there's a hole plugged by a rubber stopper that allows you to connect the cube to a larger tank if you want. On the front, you have power and connection status lights, and above them, the Grow Cube logo. On the right side, you have an unlock button that can be used to unlock it if it goes into lock mode. Long pressing this button will reconfigure the network. There's also a reset button behind the pinhole and a perforated area for air intake for the water pump that's inside. The top of the cube is a spring-loaded lid and pressing down on one end of it releases the catch. Inside, you have four moisture sensors and water nozzles, 12 nozzle brackets, a bunch of barbed tubing connectors, and 10 meters of tubing. Inside the tank, you can see a filter already installed over the pump inlet and on the side, you can see graduated tank level lines. This thing can hold up to 1500 milliliters, which in freedom units is about 50 ounces. To get this thing set up, you're gonna to need to have your plants on hand. We're gonna start with this succulent plant that I got from the hardware store. The first thing we'll do is connect the power, then download the GrowCube app and walk through the setup instructions. It's super easy, just connecting to a Wi-Fi access point that it broadcasts and then configuring your Wi-Fi information. One thing I love about this device is that it doesn't require any connection to an external cloud service. Meaning if you don't have internet, this will still work. If you can't or don't want to connect it to your Wi-Fi, you can actually just connect to the access point that it broadcasts and then control the grow cube directly from your phone. I noticed some reviews that people had issues connecting it to their Wi-Fi, but when they connected directly to their phone, they could update the firmware and then they were good to go. I never experienced this and it was super easy to add to my Wi-Fi. When connecting to the access point that it broadcasts, it's going to ask for a password, and that password can be found on a sticker on the bottom of the Grove Cube. Now that the app's set up, we're going to go ahead and install the moisture sensor and water nozzle. The moisture sensor has a line on it indicating how far it should be pushed into the soil, and installing it is as easy as that, just pushing it down into the soil by the roots of the plant. After this, we're going to cut a length of water tubing. What I did was cut it to the length of the moisture sensor cable, since it doesn't need to be longer than that moisture sensor cable if you're using that sensor. Now we need to connect the water nozzle to the length of tubing. So we'll take one of the tubing connectors and push it into the end of the nozzle. And then we'll push the tubing over the connector and we're all set. Next, we'll install the nozzle onto the plant now. And we want to make sure it's in an arc around the plant so we get good water coverage around the plant. It can be secured on either end with nozzle brackets. These are pushed down into the soil and then the nozzle just clips into the brackets. You have to be smart with how you place the nozzle because it can end up spraying out as you're about to see. I actually ended up pushing the nozzle down below the rim of the pot and covering it with that fake moss so it didn't spray out. This has worked pretty well so far. Once that's installed, we just need to connect the sensor and tube to the grow cube via the respective ports on the back. This is gonna be plant A, so the tube goes to water port A and the sensor goes to sensor port A. Next, we'll fill the water reservoir partway with some water and close the lid back up. In the app, we need to create a new plant. Tap plus plant and choose the outlet for the plant. In our case, we'll choose A since that's the port letter we've hooked up. A library of plants will show up. You can search through the plants, but if your plant isn't there, you can create your own. That's what I did here and actually for all of my plants, so you tap the new button and fill in the details. You give it a nickname, scientific name, and then add a picture. Since I don't know any other environment details, I skip the rest of the fields. After you save it, you then tap the self-made tab and you'll see your new plant in the list there, so choose that. It'll then ask you what type of watering you wanna do. Smart watering uses the moisture sensor and regular watering is time-based. Even though I did add the moisture sensor so I could monitor the moisture of the soil, my plan didn't come with any soil moisture information, so I really can't control it that way, and instead I'm gonna use time-based. The instructions with my plant said to add about one ounce every month. 
I ran into a problem here because the longest interval between plant watering that you can do is 10 days. So I just set it at 10 days for the interval and one second for the pump time. We can dial this in later, so we'll just hit the save button. As soon as it's saved, the pump activates, which you have to watch out for if the nozzle's not set up properly like mine wasn't. The water went all over my desktop, so I had to tuck the nozzle in and secure it a little better, and then manually trigger the pump to test the new nozzle position. This took a couple tries, but I finally got the water to stay in the pot. So you've probably been waiting for me to show you how to add this thing to Home Assistant, and there are actually two ways. The first way is the way Elocro says you should do it, and they actually have a video showing how to do it, but this way is actually way too complicated and not something I even want to attempt. It's actually circumventing just adding an integration to Home Assistant, which would be the best way to do it. Instead, they want you to install a Home Assistant OS image on a virtual machine, and that image will have an MQTT broker, no red code, and a dashboard all set up for controlling the grow cube. This is great, except for I want to integrate the grow cube with my existing device, not create a new instance of Home Assistant. The second way is to use a custom integration from Home Assistant Community Store. This one is currently under development and has less controls than the first method, but this is the method I'm going to show. To add the grow cube, you first need to give it a static IP address in your router. This part was super tough for me since the grow cube app does not give you the MAC address or the IP address of the device. So you kind of have to guess which device of the hundred devices on your network is the grow cube. To do this, I looked at the list of unnamed or weirdly named devices that I didn't know what they were. And then I turned the grow cube off and watched to see which one became unavailable. I finally found it and renamed it for the future. Once this is done, you need to install Hacks to Home Assistant Community Store if you haven't already. Once that's done, go to Hacks, click Integrations, and click the three-dot menu in the upper right corner. Choose Custom Repositories, and then paste in the URL to the custom repo that I've linked below. Choose Integration for the category, and then click Add. Click the new repository that appears in Hacks, and click Download. Once it's done, restart Home Assistant and then head back to the settings menu. Click devices and services and then click add integration in the bottom right. Search for grow cube, click it and wait for the configuration wizard. It'll ask you for the cube's IP address. So enter that and then click submit. The integration will show up, but for me it indicated that the setup was failed. So just click the integration, click the three dot menu and then click reload. You'll see one device appears and six entities. The entities are not actually attached to the device for some reason, but they are functional. It gives you soil moisture sensors for each plant and then temperature and humidity entities from the sensors inside the cube itself. Like I said before, this method doesn't give you control over the pump to manually water, but it's definitely a start. Okay, so let me quick show you some testing that I did to figure out how to water my plants more accurately. Like I mentioned before, there are two parameters in the app that control water dispensing, and that is interval and duration. Interval is how long between watering and duration is the amount of time the pump is on. The watering interval can be set in a bunch of different intervals up to 10 days and the watering duration can be set from one to 60 seconds. However, some plants need to be watered based on volume. So I decided to do some tests to get a general idea of the flow rate of this pump. To do this, I figured I'd use watering port C for a test plant. So I cut a short piece of tubing and connected it to that port. I got a Pyrex measuring cup and put the end of the hose into the cup and then created a test plant in the app. I set a stopwatch on my phone to capture the amount of time it would take to fill the measuring cup to 250 milliliters. I repeated this test several times, pouring the water back into the reservoir each time. Once I accidentally let the hose flop out of the measuring cup, which would have been bad, but the phone and the books on the bookshelf seemed to be fine. Averaging my results, it took about 25 seconds to pump 250 milliliters. So that's about 10 milliliters per second or about 0.34 fluid ounces per second. Based on these numbers, I can go back and set up my plant properly. Since my plant required one ounce per month, that would be roughly 0.33 ounces every 10 days, which is actually really close to one second of pumping every 10 days. Since I already had the pump duration for one second, I'm actually good to go. I don't have to change anything. And now we're going to see how it goes over the next few months. Okay, so my general thoughts are these. Overall, this is a really cool device, especially if you live with someone who has a tendency to kill plants. One thing I didn't like was that every time you modify the watering frequency and save it, it pumps again because it's starting a new cycle, I guess. This means you kind of overload it with water when you're first setting it up, which is kind of annoying. 
Unfortunately, I didn't really get to test the smart watering very much where you use the moisture sensor to tell you when to water it, but I'll be monitoring the moisture of my plants to see how they do long term, and then I can decide when they should be watered based on soil moisture instead of just a time interval. Another thing that you have to note with this device, and this is very important, is that this integration is under development and should in no way be considered stable. So don't buy this device if you wanted to work with Home Assistant right out of the box. You should wait a little bit. My experience with this device though otherwise has been great, but I have seen a lot of negative comments online and it all seems to stem around being connected to Wi-Fi and not staying connected. This thing has stayed connected for me, so I think it has to do with an older firmware version, I'm not really sure, but I am using the Google Nest Wi-Fi which has 5 gigahertz and 2.4. As is typical with smart home devices, this one only works on 2.4 gigahertz networks. I'm gonna be doing more review videos like this as well as some WLED videos that are coming up that I'm super excited about. So if you're interested, hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified when the next one comes out. If you wanna support the channel, you can become a member, give a super thanks, or pick up some of my custom t-shirts from my shop. But anyways, thanks for watching, see ya.